Hi, my name is uh, Jeremiah Rose. I'm a digital maps coordinator at the American Printing House for the Blind. Um, just a little bit about us first. Um, um, the American Printing House for the Blind is uh, over 160 years old. It's, the, I believe, the largest producer of Braille books and uh, materials in the uh, United States. And we produce like low vision textbooks, uh, audiobooks for blind and visually impaired uh, readers and um, a wide variety of educational aids and technology projects. One of which is uh, for um, several years we've been uh, making the Nearby Explorer uh, app, which is a GPS app for travelers who are blind or visually impaired. And uh, starting in 2017, um, about two years ago, we started using um, uh, open street maps to hold the indoor maps they were using to bring uh, navigation and wayfinding for uh, blind and visually impaired travelers into indoor spaces. So uh, Nearby Explorer, it's, it's available for both iOS and Android. It's a free app. And, um, and what it allows you to do, I'll go ahead and give you a little demonstration of how uh, you can use it. Um, the, if you pull it up, um, in the uh, fr from Magna the store, Center, 90 yards southwest. if you don't have a uh, University five five four five five Church yep. Saint Southeast near McNamara Alumni Center thirty yards east near Diamico yep. and Sons thirty yards west. <clears throat> If you don't have a screen reader running, it pub, pubs up a map, but um, for most users who have a screen reader uh, operating, it just uh, goes, takes you to the home screen and allows Magna you to, um, to, while you're moving around, announce the points of interest that are around you all through an audio interface. So, um, Magna Center, 90 yards southwest. certainly knows I'm here. Um, <coughs> It has a couple of different modes to help you find your way when you're moving. For so example, the general the general way you hold it when you're traveling is just with the screen up and the business end of the phone pointed forwards. But if you tip it up like this, so the screen heading is pointing south. towards you, it puts it in compass mode, so it tells you what direction you're heading. Heading south. Heading south. Right. Heading southwest. Or if you tip it into the side, the uh, so the screen is facing to the left, that puts it in geombe mode. And as you spin around. Um, it'll announce the points of interest that are pointed in that direction. U.S. Paradigm copies 170 yards south. Stadium Village 180 yards southeast. Jimmy John's 140 yards southeast. My Burger 110 yards southeast. Shins Hair Salon 120 yards southeast. Smockdale Tobacco right. 190 yards southeast. So as you're moving around, you can stop and orient yourself and see what is around you. Um, we have a a Magna wide variety Magna of other features Magna too. Magna so, for example, you can set a um, set a watch point. Um, like last night, we ate at the Korea restaurant, 120 yards from here. So I can just set it as a watch Magna point. Magna Center, 90 yards southwest. And let's see. I'm a little Near turned around. And sun's 30 yards west. And when I'm pointed the toward, there we are. Yards so when I point towards it, it'll send me a tactile alert and announce what direction it is. So I can spin the phone around, and when I'm pointed in that same direction, and it comes maybe off a little bit. Um, it'll give an alert, and I can head towards that direction. So I had out of the hotel this morning. I wasn't sure exactly where the McNamara Center was. I chose it on the list, and it was like, oh, okay, it's in that direction. I can gen generally walk there. So just clear that watch point. And uh, you can use all of these same sort of features to navigate in space uh, indoors as well. Uh, so we also have a feature called Virtual Go To, which allows you to virtually travel to a location, and it'll make the announcements as if you're in there in that space. And uh, with all these features, um, you can use it to navigate indoor spaces that are that are mapped as well. So uh, for this one, I'll travel. We don't have this building mapped, uh, but I'll just virtually go to the um, 21C Museum Hotel, which is an art hotel in Louisville, Kentucky, and. Um, it will announce the POIs in the building hotel front desk, miles as if I'm in the uh, museum, museum hotel. hotel so if I turn into Geobium, 
My Burger 110 Yards, Shit, Smockdale, Fires, Mac, East Gateway District, Steam Distribution 100, Goldie's Locker Route. Did I not? No, I think I. There we go. Virtual go to. Hotel front desk, Louisville, West Main 40202, West Main Street, near 21. Let's see. Gallery 5 en entrance 80. Entrance to men's restroom 20 yards southwest. Text rain. Untitled. Artwork. Text rain. Untitled. Artwork. At top of central stairs 15 yards northwest. Emergency exit 100 yards north. Lobby gallery exhibition. Reception. Stairs entrance 80 yards northwest. Entrance to northwest stairwell 40 yards. De Dining area 20. Fallen fruit. The practices of everyday life. Exhibition. 19 yards. Fallen fruit. Yep. And so uh, what that allows you to do uh, is just imagine yourself in that space, find out a lot of the points of interest there. And when you travel to the space, um, if you were to go into um, the 21C, that's pretty much what you hear if you were to stand in front of the front desk and do GeoBeam. And while you're traveling around, uh, it will um, update points of interest for you as you travel through. So. You know, indoor, we've been, it, the app has handled outdoor locations for several years, but indoor is, poses a lot of challenges for blind travelers. You know, they, when you go into a space, there's just a huge amount of signage that we rely on to find our way through the space, exit signs and restrooms. Um, and it's not really accessible at all for, for blind travelers. You know, so you, we, after we um, implemented this at the, we mapped the Louisville airport and put up beacons there. And, uh, you know, um, we had uh, stories where, you know, a blind traveler would go to the airport and uh, to get out of their vehicle um, and a person will come and guide them to their gate. They'll have to wait for a person to guide them. Uh, they'll go, they'll be guided to their gate and then say if they have to go to the bathroom, they have to call for another guide guided to the restroom and uh, back to the gate. And here using this, they can independently just step out of the vehicle and make their way to the gate on their own. And along the way, uh, maybe find out all of the, you know, coffee shops and uh, convenience stores and restaurants that are there, but they just didn't have any way of knowing that, that they were there or where they were. Yeah. So um, as uh, it, the app understands you know, the level of the building, what features are on different floors, when you go into a building, it'll immediately sense that there are beacons there uh, to provide some location information and switch between outdoor and indoor mode uh, pretty seamlessly. Yeah. And so you know, for this, we need a, a map, uh, and we also need good location information. Um, the map is mostly uh, contained in OpenStreetMap. Um, and loca location is a hard challenge too, right? So we're familiar with GPS outside. Uh, GPS doesn't work very well inside. Uh, for, for the maps, we can use a variety of information. We can get, sometimes we get permission to use floor plans uh, from places. This is a floor plan of the Louisville uh, City Hall. And we haven't mapped all of that, just uh, public areas and places that the public can come in and visit. Um, sometimes these are not usable at all. You have to, you know, do some pen and paper. Um, or uh, we've started using some mobile LiDAR devices. Uh, this is a, a mobile LiDAR scan of the Crescent Hill Public Library down the street. And you can take a two-dimensional slice of it and then um, uh, generate a floor plan from that that you can use for mapping. We put them into uh, OSM, usually with ID and door or JOSM, and just uh, draw the rooms and corridors and tag them with simple indoor tagging. Yeah. And some of the tools we use, you know, ID and door is great. ID uh, is wonderful also, but it tends to not distinguish between the levels of a building. Um, so if you have a six floor building, they're all, all that information is kind of squashed down and overlaps. But ID and door differentiates between levels. Uh, we also use Open Level Up, which is just a viewer. This is a map of the uh, APH Museum. So if you're in Louisville and want to see, you know, first edition of a Louis Braille book or Stevie Wonder's piano, you can come and visit us and learn about you know, blindness and visual impairment. Uh, we also use JOSM, of course, a lot, but don't have a slide for that. 
location indoors is a big problem because there's a lot of different technologies uh, that you can use. GPS sometimes has some pretty major problems inside, um, especially if you're going to the basement of a building of a big complex concrete, concrete building. You might not have any GPS signal at all. Um, we've, you know, there are solutions with Wi-Fi access points and dead reckoning and a variety of other sensors. But the solution that we use most is just Bluetooth low energy beacons. These are like little wall mounted devices that have batteries or they can be put in a light and send out a little um, advertisement on iBeacon. Um, here's an Estimote um, beacon and a contact.oe beacon. And what they do is just send out a little advertisement 10 times a second. It says, I'm a beacon. Here's my ID. Here's my signal strength. And from that, we can, uh, when, when the app senses a beacon, um, it looks on OSM to find out if there are any mapped beacons nearby. And it can attempt to uh, pin to that beacon's location or trilaterate a, uh, the location of the, of the phone. Right. Um, this, there's a lot of limitations to Bluetooth low energy beacons. Um, they are not necessarily really well designed for getting location information. Um, they have to be installed and configured at every venue. Um, mostly they're battery powered and it's, it takes a lot of, um, um, uh, work to, to get all of that set up. And um, the signal strength is often really problematic as well. But we're just trying to get a little bit better than indoor GPS. So it's a solution that does work. And we just map these into OpenStreetMap with the tag indoor mark equals beacon. Yep. And we have uh, mapped and beaconized um, probably 30 to 40 venues in Louisville. Um, most of the downtown museums on Museum Row, except for one, uh, the Louisville Airport, Louisville Convention Centers and Expo Centers, and a variety of other places uh, around the country and, um, and the world as well. Yeah. And the last uh, slide I'd like to mention is uh, we're, we do not do indoor routing. Um, we don't have... A uh, way that we settled on to do indoor routing, and uh, right yesterday I put, posted the um, proposal for footway indoor to the OSM tagging list. So if you want to have a look at that and comment, I'd uh, love to hear your feedback about that. It, this would just go with uh, highway equals footway, and then footway equals indoor to mark an indoor route. So do I have any time for questions? Or yep, uh, if anybody would like to. Ask questions, I'll be here now. Yes, uh, yes. The app was playing different tones, uh, different notes when, it was, when you were searching around. Are those different types of attributes? Or? Uh, th yeah, there's a, uh, it has a lot of different feedback. It's a pretty complicated app to get to use. It has a lot of options, um, but, um, and it uses, you know, musical tones, it uses buzzes and a variety of for other feedback to give you different information. Yeah, that was a question that was posed. Um, the I, look, I was looking at that this uh, just a few minutes ago, and uh, the um, the I believe the highway equals corridor is from a different uh, indoor tagging scheme. Um, and um, I, I, my question would be how well it integrates with uh, simple indoor tagging because we have. You know, simple indoor tagging, you have um, a market corridor as an area with uh, indoor equals corridor. Um, and a lot of, a lot of buildings have, are just, every, every building is a, a special snowflake. Uh, you know, you have museum lobbies, you have um, um, just a wide variety of spaces. So I'd, I'd be curious to see, you know, if you have any suggestions about, about that too. On highway equals corridor? Yeah. Oh, no, it would be, be corridor on the tag on the side of it. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm not I'm sure. But it's, you should be able to do that as a going through, going through a building. 
Yeah, there's because uh, there's like a tunnel. A tunnel equals yes tag, I think. Yeah, I can't remember what that. Because it's not considered a tunnel. It's considered yeah. a cutaway thing. It's a building missing. The building is missing a piece that you're right. going through. Right. Yes. Uh, I've forgotten the name, but there is a paid subscription um, app to assist uh, blind people finding their way. And I know a number of airports have basically paid this company to map it, but they make it freely available to anyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with that uh, competitor? And is there, do you think, do you see any um, opportunities for, you know, places like airports that are public spaces that mm -hmm. might have an interest in working with you to maybe go from just sort of you creating the content to mm -hmm. having sort of a funding source to expand the reach of what you've done so far? Yeah. Yeah. There's a, we're, we're certainly not the only people who are working on, um, uh, uh, GPS navigation for uh, people who are blind and visually impaired. You know, there's Right Here and and Loud Steps and a, a variety of other apps. Um, I I'm not sure exactly who you're who you're talking about, but um, I'd be you know curious to to hear more about uh, what they're doing. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, we definitely want to collaborate with people and uh, get. Get get more information in <coughs> Open Street Map. I mean, uh, we have a, a mission driven organization for empowering people who are blind and visually impaired, and uh, there's just there's just a lot of buildings that people need to go into, uh, a lot more than we can uh, do in the way that we've been working on it. So, yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, well, what they what they do, um, they announce the um, they just send out a Bluetooth signal, and um, they have a, a, a an announced signal strength, right? Uh, like the RSSI at one meter, and you know if you're if it's if you've got a certain level of signal strength at one meter, you can uh, measure it on the phone and take the difference in the the signal strength and try to get. Um, a distance reading from that. Now, this is a, a pretty difficult thing to do accurately um, because the, the, the signal strength decreases exponentially. So it's not like a linear distance or anything like that. Uh, but um, it's just hard to find technologies that are that are better, you know, for, for a place that's underground um, and you, doesn't require you to use like a dongle on your phone or carry around a separate device. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are there any examples of apps when you're back on to the previous question uh, that use maybe a camera, computer vision to mm -hmm. help uh, locate as well as uh, explain the surroundings? Yeah. Um, I, uh, I've I've seen some of those. I think uh, Google came out with a a, a, a machine uh, like a, you would put the phone in your pocket and use a camera to uh, announce some um, like objects in the room and try to find some other things like doors. Um, we haven't used computer vision um, for that, um, but but it's certainly you know um, a very interesting topic. Yeah. Okay, well, um, I will be around for the rest of the convention if you all have any other questions. Uh, thank you.